Does anyone know what started this? The first Resident Evil, maybe? Maybe Resident Evil Zero? Honestly, if we're going by timeline standards? Maybe Sweet Home, if you want to get technical. Yeah, well, I was supposed to start last week, and I got a call to stay away. I wish I'd come here sooner. You're here now, Leon. That's all that matters. Okay, Lieutenant. I'm ready. Hopefully you'll be able to find a way out of this station. That officer you met earlier, Elliot. He thought this secret passageway might do the trick. Mm. This is good news. We can get you to a hospital. No, no, I am not the priority here. Lieutenant, I'm not just gonna leave you here. I'm giving you an order, rookie! You save yourself first. I'd come with you, but I'd just slow you down. This exchange is a lot better in Leon's campaign. Because it actually is a higher ranking officer telling the new guy, do what I say, and also I'm gonna give you some advice right here. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out. Or you run. Got it? That's a good read. Very good acting here. <laughs> That's one thing that uh, this engine does very well, you know, the the pained looks and the, the eyebrows, the creases and the face. The pinpointed acting along with what the RE engine is bringing here. Th this is on par with, like, animated Hollywood films. This is good stuff. On their own movies, really. Oh, that too, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got our first sub weapon, a knife. Yeah. <laughs> He just starts slashing, and Martin's like, What the hell are you what doing? What the hell are you doing, rookie? Yeah. So, yeah, Marvin has a lot more of a role to play here. In the original, he was the first person you met in the police station, and he basically said, Save yourself, and then locks you out of the room you meet him in. And then when you meet up with him later, he turns into a zombie in real time. With this one, he's actually not only leading you in the right direction, but he also gives you context, and also gives you good advice. If you can't kill it, run. He is your training wheels. In a manner of speaking. He gives you very good training wheels. All right. Uh, we got solutions to all three puzzles in order to move on to the first boss. I love the realistic smudging of the ink there. Like mm -hmm. it's like it's been, you know, in someone's dirty, oily pocket for a while. You know, sweats and just the discoloration. Good detail. If I was a nitpicking douchebag, I would say there's no bloody thumbprint from when Marvin touched it on it now. Missed opportunity, Capcom, worst game, literally unplayable. Well, duh, man, it had already dried. Oh, true, true. This was told to me by one of the many commenters on the series. Thank you very much. I didn't know this happened. I didn't even consider it. What happens if you solve one third of the main puzzle while Marvin's still here? It was right. Yeah, but the passage isn't open yet. Now you can slide through there, skinny boy. Get in there. I like that they thought of this because that is the only medallion you can get right now while Marvin is still awake. So it's cool. They thought of every angle. It's that detail that you really need to focus on. This is not how I imagined my first day. Were you imagining, like, unicorns and rainbows, Leon? No, I thought my third day would be like this, not my first. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, you gotta get through all the paperwork first, and then zombies attack. I mean, orientation, and then the hazing rituals. Uh, yeah, they shove me in a couple lockers, I understand, yeah, haze the new guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, couple, blah, blah, blah. Couple of in-services here and there to make sure that we've got everything on the up and up. Maybe a couple of, uh, you know, uh, trainings here and there, too. I love this detail. He and Marvin did this after the fade to black. They actually covered the door so you can't go back out. Lovely. Ah, oh, it's so nice. Okay, we need to find a way back in there. So, uh, we'll go and do that here momentarily. Oh, look at that. To those yeah. who have served. Hmm. I bet if you were to get a magnifying glass and 4K resolution, you could actually see a few dev names on there. Hmm. Could you? I mean, I'm yeah, sure people could. have looked into the, you know, I think this is a job for a data miner.
So this right here solidified Capcom as the Golden Boys when it comes to fucking gore. Yeah. Let's get a slow reveal. Smile for the camera! Oh my god! Uh, it's like Play-Doh and ground beef. It's a full detached jaw! What on earth was happening in the dev rooms? I love it. Keep doing it. I wonder how they got these really graphic scenes. I mean, I know how Netherrealm does it, those poor souls. <laughs> Jesus. I don't think they had to, you know, examine car crash victims. What I think is happening is a mixture of multiple textures to make it look like, you know, steak fibers. To look like beef as it's just harvested. So, dead animals, not dead humans. You know, it does... Th like, this does kind of remind me of, like, the hyper-violent movies of the 70s and 80s. Like, you know, your Cannibal Ferox, your uh, Cannibal Holocaust... All of those uh, yeah, disgusting th films. Th th those kinds of hyper, hyper, gory, gory movies. So I like this. You remember how I mentioned in the last episode all the body bags outside of the RPD? Yeah. Here's your explanation. Uh, uh, Somebody turned while inside the police department, mm. resulting in multiple deaths. That's uh, not very good, is it? It, it might be very bad, actually, some might say. So then a mob attacked the station. This is just as they were trying to board the place up. And then 12 more people died. Jesus. It's, I mean, leaving this whole place in disarray. Uh, as you probably saw in the background, a zombie broke in the window. This is one thing that RE2 does very well, and the original actually did very well as as well. Sorry to be redundant. But zombies can eventually break through the windows. They break in extremely early in this version. But what I like about it is you can choose what windows get boarded up. In the original, you would find a special cable that closed all the windows in a specific hallway, but you had to choose which hallway to close the windows in. So still a choice you have to make. And I'll show you which are the best windows to board up so you don't have to deal with headaches later. Is that a fat phobic joke? What, him <laughs> banging on the candy bar machine? Yeah. You know, some zombie movies like to delve into the fact that uh, the thoughts of the original living person is still there somewhere. And that's what I'd probably do if I turned into a zombie. Go for the cheap M&Ms. Oh, yes, cut up the legs. Yep. Now, uh... What version is this? The Xbox Series X upgraded, so technically Xbox One. But with the next-gen coat of paint on it. So it's the Xbox Series X version? Yes. Because they were... But it never got released disc. Well, no. For the Series X, so... No. Yes, the Series X version. Just like how I played the PS5 version, which yeah. was just the PS4 version, but the upgraded digital version. Because life is kind of cool sometimes. <laughs> exactly. By the way, there was a reason I was slashing at his legs, and this is actually a tip for you if you ever tried to go back and play this. I, I know you probably so. won't, but just to throw it out there, in hardcore mode, killing as many enemies as you can with the least amount of ammo you can is extremely beneficial. So what I like to do is, once a zombie goes on the ground, because they're definitely not dead yet, slashing them with a sub-weapon like a knife, there will be no shortage of knives, Slashing them and getting rid of their arms, legs, or even outright killing them with a knife will save you a headache later, especially in hardcore. But every zombie's a headache. I know. What's also a headache are those that are programmed to be headaches. I hate headaches! I know, but let me be your medication to get rid of your headache, sir. I can help you. I just want to go to a town that's full of advertisements and spam. I want to go to Advil. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that's bad. I'll leave. See, that's when you know you had a... G oh, God! See, this is when you know you have grade A material, is when you have to apologize for it. Like, when you have to go, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's when it's like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 
So this guy is going to be stuck in here for basically the rest of the campaign. I didn't even have to shoot at him, but if I got a crit, that would have been even more beneficial. I always try to go for a crit on whatever difficulty I'm on, but if I have to run, I have to run. And just so I don't have to run from you... The guide I followed basically said that this is a necessity. That right there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it basically shoves a zombie between you and a save room. You're, that you, is so mean. Yeah, you're going to be uh, going through this hallway a lot anyway, so it's mm -hmm. best to board that one up if you have to choose one. Ooh, listen. Buddy, I don't have any nostalgia for Resi 2. This doesn't mean anything to me. It's still a nice tune. The sad part is, it only plays here. In this one room? In this one room. And the other sad part is, it only plays once. <laughs> it never plays again. <laughs> That's what I liked about the original games is uh, audio cues. Save rooms had an audio cue, so you knew when you were safe. Well, here I think we're going for more visual cues. We are, Things yeah. are safe when the lights are on. Yeah, I can see that. 75% safe 75% of least. the time. A stray zombie could come in, but it'd be, you'd, you'd be able to see it. He'd make noise. It, you're fine. Yeah, this game is all about sound. You can hear a zombie in a room before you actually see it. That's how good the audio direction is. Red herb. Yeah. Put it together with a green because it's useless by itself. Now we got a full heal. You get a purple. I mean, red and green herb. Purple. Ooh, and we get to purple herbs. Ugh. Let's develop some film here. Actually, if you get purple herbs, that's like really, really good green herbs. <laughs> In fact, it gives you a caffeine high and you're able to run faster, too. <laughs> Isn't there a, an achievement for using the box like three times or something like that? Uh, for never using the box. Never using the box. You can fuck right off. There is an achievement that's normally accompanied by a second achievement. 14,000 or less steps, and beating the game without opening an item box. Totally doable. On assisted mode. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to choose, like, normal or hardcore. You can go for the assisted mode, it's fine. I got the Platinum Trophy in Resi 7, 8, and 4 Remake. That's you're good. good. I'm, yeah, I'm, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I've done. I, I paid my dues. I would say going for the platinum in Resident Evil 2 is so much easier than doing it in three. This three is tough. Inferno mode. Uh, the bullshit mode where everything's on fire. That's the that, that's the nightmare uh, professional, professional mode. Uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, no. It's worse than professional mode. <laughs> I think uh, speedrunner carcinogen said it best. Inferno mode is professional mode with ten times more bullshit. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah, so sometimes this can happen. Depending on the pathing of a zombie, sometimes they can just fall over the ledge and end up somewhere else. This guy was on the floor above us, but he tried to get to us at a certain angle and fell over the edge. It shouldn't take an entire clip to take out one guy. You know why it's taking so long? Because they're on hardcore mode! Because I'm not focusing. You do more damage on focus shots, but it takes longer. Is that where the... Where the reticle goes... Ah... Uh, that must be my problem! Yeah, that's all. I'm playing it like Resi 4 again. Mm-hmm. Can't do that. Why was, why was that my first Resi game? Why? Because you're a filthy cast. <laughs> I'm that, sorry. That's fair. Bask in my filth and my stench. You wanna know what's kinda sad? <laughs> I did what the ah, fuck. Get out of here. This was probably a lot of people's first Resident Evil game. This remake? Yep. Probably the, it is the, the highest selling game. It is the highest selling one. Suckered me into buy it, so. Let's see. The jumping on point for a lot of people was Biohazard, RE2, and back in the day, RE4. For fans who hadn't played it since the beginning. Those were the three main jumping on points. Yeah. Because they made the biggest changes. With this one, they took the gameplay of 4, but updated it, updated a classic, so people could finally play it now without the fixed camera angles. These are fun puzzles, by the way. They annoy me sometimes, but they're pretty fun. 
They're not set solutions either. Every time you load up your save, they're always different. So you just got to keep going until you get it. It's not a great uh, security system because you could just sit there for like 10 minutes and solve it. Boop, 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 boop. Also, I think this is somebody having a laugh because of the message saying, All right, who ripped off the buttons in the gun safety <laughs> lockers? So there we go, extra button. See, I love explanations for game bullshit. <laughs> I think we're actually going to go do that right now, because I need stuff. I need to have all the stuff, otherwise I'm going to die. Because one other thing that Hardcore Mode did is lessen how much inventory space you have overall. Gently weeping in the corner. It's so mean. And the worst part is, I got confused. I got to a certain point while playing through Hardcore Mode to uh, study for this Let's Play. And I went, wait a minute, there's supposed to be... Inventory here, where is it? What's uh, up, man? I have a question? Yeah. What's stopping me from putting in that blank button, pressing that button, taking it back out again and putting in the other one and then pushing that uh, other Gameplay. Button? Gameplay? Yep. Ah. Uh, or maybe just Leon's just stupid. Also, in order to get the last of the inventory, you need that third button, unfortunately. We you just take out the button? You already got the button right there? I mean, the button should still work, just push it to make sure that... What if there's any tampering and it erases the number? It's an art museum! <laughs> Which is why... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't know technology, it only knows sculptures. It's an art museum <laughs> from the 40s, what do you want? <laughs> Down with technology. Have I ever told you about the audio direction in this game, by the way? You've, uh... raved about it a couple of times, but I don't think anything specifically. 3D audio. Ah, yes. Made specifically for this game. If you have a surround sound system, you're going to hear zombies literally behind you. It's great. Mm. I've played it with a surround sound stereo system, and it actually made me a better player <laughs> because I knew where things were coming from. I'm big on the headphones because I got some yes. like decent headphones. And uh, especially on these new consoles, uh, the sound system is quite excellent. You can also just plug it into your controller and there you go. You that's, got some of the best experiences. That's precisely what I mean. Does Xbox have that? Yep. Oh, God. What in the... Hmm. That better not be something horrifying. If it's something horrifying, I swear to God... I'm gonna scream, pee, and cry! I hope this log doesn't tell me about the thing I just saw. Today survivors. Ah! <laughs> so this is an explanation for how the Lickers got their names and their big gimmick. They're blind, but they're good at hearing. That... Wouldn't they call them bats, then? Well, they're blind as bats. Then why aren't they called bats or bat beasts? Because shooting a thing called a batter just sounds stupid. Also, they have large tongues, so lickers. Then why didn't they focus on the light? You know what, whatever. The guy's dead anyway. <laughs> he did mention not to be a gun-toting American idiot while running around here, so maybe well, he was onto something. Bad news for you! Yeah. Yippee ki <laughs> And then the building goes silent. Hey, buddy. You get me down here? I'm just hanging around, you know. <laughs> you know, if he actually died with that facial formation, it's like he was on an amu amusement park ride. woo Or he's like, oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> just stopped in immediate rigor mortis. <laughs> so this is your first tip-off that Hardcore is going to play some dirty tricks. There used to be inventory up here, but they took it away. Such a disgruntled individual. Gonna lock cops in this room and blow them up? What the hell? Is this a cop doing this or just a guy doing this? I'd like to think it's a guy. Some guy. I think somebody got cooped up in here too long and went a little nuts. Ah, uh, awaiting trial date, but they lost the information, so it's always just pending, pending, pending. Pending forever. He's been waiting on those uh, assault and battery charges for like 15 years. Leon, it's Marvin. I need you back here ASAP. Are you okay, Marvin? I've got something to show you. It's important. Copy that. I'll be right there. I don't want to see your wound. Never mind then. <laughs> Eddie's. <laughs> 
I like that. That's a little bit of missable dialogue, but it's also a hint to the player. You should come here now. Uh, we're gonna clear out this room. This I, is a very... What a shot! I fucking hate this room. <laughs> I hate this room so bad. It's a mean room! This, this room's a bastard because you don't know which zombies are gonna get up unless you've played it. Many, many times. Like, this guy, he's gonna get up. That guy's gonna get up. There's a guy on the other side of those bookcases there who's a beefy, chonky boy. Mm-hmm. Just like this beefy, chonky boy. I had to... I, I, spent, I, I did, like, three times in this room. It's like, why won't this one guy what? die? <laughs> because we're not focusing. Yup, 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 yup. Well, even then, when you do a focus shot, you only have a chance of getting a crit and dealing more damage. I mean, you'll always do more damage while focusing. Well, then, there you go. But if you're going for that lovely crit... Yeah. Another suggestion I would give is if the head isn't doing much because hardcore changed the percentages on them actually being stunned by it, go for the legs. If you blow off one of their legs, they're stuck on the floor. They're not getting back up. Yeah, this guy. What I find funny is they pull a trick that the original game did. This used to be a puzzle room. And, in fact, they still have a puzzle here. It's moving the bookcases. But the best part is, it still has the collapsing floor from the original. That, if you accidentally try to go to the door at the top left from where I'm at right now, you'll fall through the floor and attract all the zombies that get up. It's a beginner's trap. It's a Dark Souls move. Yeah! But that's how you find out which zombies actually get up, so when you fuck up, reload your save, and swear against the game a lot, uh, you go, oh yeah, I remember this guy getting up constantly. There we go. Technically, we don't have to worry about him, but I really don't want him surviving. I am a big fan of damage physics like this. <laughs> Cutting off limbs and- Oh, man, look at that viscera! Ew! Yeah. Ew! I don't even know what kind of liquids those are! It's amazing! There we go. All of them gone. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that knife because it was about to break. There we go. Brand new knife. Uh -huh. And I shouldn't have done that. Shoot. Oh, well, that's okay. Really glad you're doing this. <laughs> no, that's alright. I got you, man. Uh, just know that this is an important item you need to get in here, but limited inventory. Don't Oops. need my gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just toss this out of here. But that's Leon's favorite gun. You can't get rid of the Matilda. If you love something, you, you have to set this. it free. Ow! All right, let's go talk to Marvin. What did he find? Is there like a 80s love song called Matilda somewhere? There you are. Come here. Take a look. Yes. I knew she'd make it. Oh, you know her? Yeah. Name's Claire. I came into town with her. You can get to that courtyard. Through the second floor. East side. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> I Thanks. love Leon's uh, excitement that Claire made it. That's adorable, but also silly. I would have gone, Claire? She made it? Really? What? Really? That college student? For Are you serious? Good for her. Wow. And I fuck with her. <laughs> you can hear Chris go, no! No! <laughs> that meme, man. Very funny. It's, I, I don't know. It, it got old very quickly, though. See, I, I I still think it's funny. You know, Chris being too pushy, of course, is what killed it. But the idea that Chris Redfield is unfuckable. <laughs> that's the really funny part to me. Oh, my God. Did I ever tell you that I uh, forever accidentally shipped him and Jill? What do you mean accidentally? Aren't they like... No. They've always been partners. They've never been an item. I accidentally shipped them all those years ago in every single Let's Play. They've both been characters. I accidentally shipped them. Well, that's like shipping uh, Sco uh, Mulder and Scully or uh, Stabler and, uh, and Benson. It just sounds right. Like, what's a good team? Chris and Jill. Claire and Leon. Just, oh, just mix them together. It's fine. Well, we all know that Chris loves uh, going in the buff with his, with his men, you know? You Precisely. Know yeah. Leon's married to the job. Um, Chris has had chances with some of his partners, but they're not going to do anything with him. Sheva's <laughs> never going to call him back. She's better than that. Oh, yes. Here's your first 
real fun puzzle and just an example of what Capcom wanted to do with these games. They wanted to make you work for your puzzles. I mean, not hard work, granted, but work for it. Ah, uh, yes. A puzzle in the form of a hazing ritual. <laughs> exactly. Be glad you're not here, rookie. Thanks, Lieutenant. Be glad you're not here, rookie. <laughs> you're getting ahead of yourself, man. I don't care. <laughs> All right. This guy's going to get up eventually. Might as well take care of him now. Oh, they threw me a party. Wait a minute. What's that missing letter? Did they spell welcome wrong? Well, yes, they did. What'd they, what'd they miss? Welcome? No, that's fine. Yeah, it looks fine now, but you notice there is a space for an extra letter, so what's that extra letter? What extra letter? What are you talking about? Yeah, what extra letter, huh? Welcome mm. Leon. Yeah, welcome Leon. Ugh. Did they add a second L? <laughs> Did they take it out? <laughs> yes, they did. Okay. <laughs> because of the original game. Japanese developer accidentally added an extra L in Welcome. And they made a joke about it in the remake. Sa, ego ga muzukashi desu ne. There we go. Just to make sure. This is a game that does not look at the double tap rule very nicely. Mm -mm. So your first puzzle is to find the nameplates of all your fellow officers. And that's the combination to the locks on your desk. Ah! Oh, there it is! There There's the extra it is! <laughs> hey. This police office is like oops all references. It's I like, love it. Welcome, Leon. There we go. Chief, 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 the L! Mm. Chief, the L! Damn it. All right, who set this up? Uh, it was me, Chief. It was me. Well, then you do it. You take that. Yep. You take the extra letter. You take the L. Hey, there we go. All right, so you have to look all over the room in order to find this stuff. But that's not the only Easter egg that's in here. You see that nameplate? Jojo. Jojo. Capcom was working on a Jojo's Bizarre Adventure game at the same time. Right, didn't they make the PlayStation Jojo games? Yep. Now it's being worked on by one of my favorite devs. CyberConnect 2! Hey, there Yay! we go. But, yeah. Uh, Hideki Kamiya specifically put JoJo into Resident Evil 2, and he made it all the way here. But it's a double-layered joke. Because it's also a nickname for Joseph Frost, one of the Stars members, so it still works within Universe. Cut off his leg so he can't stand anymore. <laughs> Damn it, Joseph. People are going to throw JoJo references now, and I'm not going to get a single one of them. It's all right. You're in a safe space. There is one more reference here. Uh, specifically, uh, we need to find the other nameplates, so I'm just showing you. There's Marvin's, there's Rita's, and where the hell is... is... There's Marvin so... and oh, Rita there's... and George Scott and David and... All right, we got the combination. But uh, the nameplate, Rita Phillips... She was basically a nothing character until the Outbreak series. And they wanted to make sure to add her name in here to add more continuity for the Outbreak games. Are they going to tie all the Resident Evils together somehow with this remake series? They trying. Hooray, we made it. Yay. We got a stock for our Matilda, and it counts as a free reload, so don't combine it just yet. We need extra ammo. I wonder what the market value is on that extra magazine. Hmm. Maybe the stock prices are going up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he can't be stopped. Oh, nope. Sorry. It's like an undead pun teller. He just doesn't die. He just keeps coming back. I've always considered myself a pundit. We're almost there, man. No worries. Are you telling me that or yourself that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it weird that they tell you about discarding items now when you've had, like, five opportunities to do it so far. Well, maybe they're telling you because uh, you now have an item that is no longer useful and will just take up inventory if you keep it. So, here's a mark that says you can get rid of it now. Which I like. Huh. Hello? 
There's a helicopter in the air. Oh, oh yeah! Oh good, helicopters are always good. Always good, especially in horror films. They always succeed, too. Every time. Best part is, we knew they were coming. Because of that guy that with the unhinged jaw and the, and the steak for a mouth. There was a helicopter on the way. Okay, this room is amazing. So later on, when we get to a certain part of the playthrough, like that table. we're going to learn that the chief of police, uh, Big Spender, bought a lot of the artwork that's in this museum. <laughs> Couldn't find a place for it, so he just shoved all this shit in this room. <laughs> Where do you put art in an art museum? <laughs> yeah, look at it. There's like boxes and tons of paintings that are just thrown up against the wall. This is his storage room for all the art pieces he bought. Environmental storytelling, you gotta love it. Can you break any of the vases? No. Nah. They're just a, cur a permanent part of the RE engine. Two stars! Literally unplayable. <laughs> Literally unplayable! Garbage video game. I thought this was the best-selling Resident Evil game. Come on, why do you gotta make such an amateur mistake? People have made that mistake before Resident Evil 6. <laughs> now, the mistake they made was making four games in one. <laughs> With the budget of four. Of too much. And the price of one. So, hmm. That's a lot of math. Alright, so the key important item in here is getting the scepter and also the key card to go get you a shotgun. So let's go get a shotgun. Let's get a shotgun. Cue scream and, and uh, cocking of a gun. Hey, you remember that helicopter? Why do you ask? No! That might be some guy's oversized drone. Uh... uh... Still no proof it's a helicopter. Uh, as, you know, maybe he's just sleeping. Uh, see, see, see? Leon, stop making that sound. No, that, no it's my breathing! <laughs> In high stressful situations, I have to breathe like this, I'm sorry. <laughs> what separates the herbs in the pot from the leaves on the tree? So if you're ever wondering why Leon and Claire are shipped now more than ever, uh, it's this goofy cutscene right here, and I love it to pieces. Hold on. Oh my god, let's kiss! Okay! You know, you're onto something. Oh jeez! <laughs> oh, I'm not dead! Oh. <laughs> Passion burns hotly. <laughs> Claire. <laughs> How you doing? You say. I'm in one piece. Boy, these guys could star in their own CW uh, TV series. Like, you put, like, a little CW logo in the corner there. No. It fits! But how are you doing? I think the best thing to come out of this yeah. is Nick Apostolidis okay. and Stephanie Panicello actually forming a friendship during the course of this game. Oh, well, you, you always love things like that. Yeah. So, what you're seeing right here, 100% genuine. See, I don't know. Like, you know, friends in horror movies. It's like something to help the audience connect with your characters better or something like that. Do you remember It Chapter 1? Yeah. Hmm? I just, I just like this scene, because this sets up not only the second scenario, but also sets up... We're not going to see from Claire for a while. So you start to think, what on earth happened to her? Uh, well, I'd, I'd rather not think about that. I'm pretty sure nothing good. Uh, having to be in Code Veronica and everything. Yeah. Ugh. Ooh. Wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. What do you mean? I like that game. I know. Oh. I well, like to make I, well I guess next time on Resident Evil 2, we'll just continue through the police station. Maybe go find a way to our first boss. I guess. Jeez. I'm making fun of my favorite games by doing... Actually, it's act it's pretty easy to make fun of my favorite games. It's Steve Burnside. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not gonna go white knight for him. I'm just gonna say he's a piece of garbage, which, too. Which is really close to Steve Burns, which I think is the guy who was Steve from Blue's Clues who I think would be really funny to be in Code Veronica. <laughs> Writing up a petition Ooh, now? Did you see a green herb? <laughs> Where? Right there, behind you. Oh, look! It's a message from my father! 